Hello everyone, Jake here. Got exciting news, the epoxy resin store got a hold of me and asked me to try out some of their stuff for fun. But they also gave me a 20% off discount code. It's Jake20 at checkout. I'll have a link below, go check it out. They sent me some micro powders, some um, alcohol inks, some liquid pigments, uh, tabletop stuff, and what I was excited for is the liquid diamonds. Y'all know that I do deeper pours and I do things like that. So this is along the lines. You're also supposed to be able to cast this without a pressure pot. We're gonna test that theory today too. I'm gonna make some hybrid pin blanks. So let's get to it. All right, first thing I need to do is I have these stabilized pieces of maple burl. And obviously they're not going to fit in there that good like that. I need to cut them down. I'm going to go to the bandsaw and do that. Let's do it. This ought to make a pretty cool hybrid blank. Uh, what I need to do is find out how much material I'm going to need. So what I'm going to do is fill this with rice. And then that will give me a good estimate of what I need. So between all three blanks, we should only need need about 10 ounces of, of resin, but I always put a little bit more in there. So at least 10, we're going to go probably 12 or 16 ounces. And that way we know we're not running short. Now the, these ones are just going to be color. So I'm going to go ahead and put mold release in there. That's what I use. And then this one, I'm going to have these in here and have these in here like that and I'm going to hot glue those down. Now this is glued in really well. It's probably not going to go anywhere. Pretty confident in it. Um, these liquid diamonds is 45 minutes to an hour of working time and when you add colors, which we're gonna make three or four different colors, you want it to be about 120 degrees before you mix those colors together, just so they don't bleed together. Um, if you do it before that, they're gonna turn different colors. And so we have about 45 minutes to uh, mix this stuff. So in that time, I'm gonna put these in the oven and that'll cure the, that'll get the moisture out of the wood and heat up the molds. and epoxy always likes that so that's what we're going to do i'm going to put these in the oven and we'll get to to mixing this stuff up all right real quick what i have here is i have a timer i have a temperature gun i have the pigments i'm going to use i have apple green flamingo pink rose gold and emerald um, <clears throat> i have a cup for each one of those and i have a mixing cup that has uh, the measurements on it because I already know how much I want to use. And so now I'm gonna put part A and part B in there and get it mixed up well, and then distribute it evenly throughout these four. And then we're gonna mix some colors. And since I have all day to stir this, I'm not gonna get all crazy with it and introduce bubbles in here. Because one of them, I remember I said we're going to have one of them where we're not even going to put in a pressure pot. So I'm going to mix slowly and take my time. Here's our timer. We're going to start that right now. And we have 45 minutes or until 120 degrees. And I believe that's already mixed up pretty good. I don't see any white. Normally when you mix this and it's not good, You'll still have white little um, tracers or, or wispy little lines behind you where you're mixing and this is uh, perfectly clear right now. So I think it's about done. I'll give it another little bit of stirring and then I'm going to distribute it through these smaller cups. Room temperature in here is 65 degrees so we've only went up about 4 degrees. Um, this is going to be about a 45 minute deal. We're only eight minutes in, but if we were using other kinds of epoxies or resins that are, are uh, faster curing, we'd already be having to put it in a pressure pot. So um, this is kind of a luxury to have all this time to mix it. All 
I think I have enough of this in there. Uh, you really don't want to have this see through. So if it's going to be a pin blank, um, you'll be able to see the pin tube in there. I think I have enough, so I'm going to get these out of the way. 20 minutes in is 75 degrees. This is some slow cooking stuff, and that's probably why you, you don't need a pressure pot, is because it slowly does it instead of just bakes the, bakes the stuff out of it. Thirty minutes, eighty degrees. Forty six minutes, ninety three degrees. Hundred degrees. It's a little bit chilly in here, it's like 65 degrees, so I'm gonna go by the temperature instead of the time. This is just a, um, you know, 45 to 60 minutes is within optimal temperature. I think I'm at the lower temperature in the shop, so I'm gonna wait till it's 120 degrees and then I'll get to pouring. 104 degrees now, starting to kick off pretty good. I'm gonna get the molds out of the oven. Hundred and ten. Two hundred and ten. There we go. I'm gonna start pouring it. In the pressure pot. Now with this blank right here, I'm not going to put it in the pressure pot, just to test. And I'm going to go ahead and turn this one and the other one that's in the uh, mold like this and uh, polish them and everything at the end of this and, and we'll see what the difference is between pressure pot and not a pressure pot. But I need to pop these bubbles as they come up with a heat gun and uh, let me get that. It doesn't take much and I'm going to come by every uh, five or ten minutes or so and pop the bubbles and and hopefully it comes out pretty good now this stuff takes a lot longer to uh, to cure so I'll probably get it out of the pressure pot tomorrow and then you're supposed to let it cure for like another 24 hours well I have to work so I have a hard time being patient anyway, so this is going to help me. I'll go to work. After a few days, I'll come back and I'll turn these things, and then we'll wrap this thing up. But you won't know because the power of video making. It's the next day, and I'm going to uh, demold this one that's out, that it didn't go to the pressure pot, and then we're going to take the ones out of the pressure pot and demold them. Here we go. It's a little bit smaller than I wanted, but it's all good. Let's get the ones out of the pressure pot. I guess one thing we need to know about this pressure pot, and I haven't tried this before, I usually don't have to leave things in overnight, but I left this in. This has been about 20 hours and this thing has only lost a couple of PSI of air pressure. So I'm pretty thrilled with it. I'll put a, a video to this, a link to this video up there. Now these things feel good. They're pretty cool looking. Um, mica powders, man, they're always cool. Uh, made this too thick. That's why that one is, that's why this one's too thin. But I'll still be able to turn that and polish it and everything to be able to tell. Um, the way this feels, I bet I could cut it and turn it right now, but I have to learn patience. So uh, in a few days I'll be off work and I'll come and I'm gonna cut these into blanks and we'll get to see these. I'll polish these up just as blanks. And I'm gonna turn these two and polish them and see what the difference is. So here it is a few days later. I'm gonna go ahead and square these up. Probably gonna use the bandsaw to do it. Um, mostly because this is a video on 
how the everyday person can do it. You don't need a fancy table saw. You can buy a smaller bandsaw and get it done and square these things up. And uh, we're gonna see how cool this stuff is. These ones are really cool. Pretty happy with them. I uh, probably should have waited a little bit longer before I mixed the colors, uh, but that experience will fix that and I'll talk about that at the end. Uh, these ones, they did turn out pretty cool. So I'm gonna sand these up to a thousand and then buff them. And these are the ones I think everybody's interested in. The smaller one is the one that I didn't use a pressure pot. And this one I did use a pressure pot. See if the claim is true that you don't need a pressure pot. So let's get this on the lathe. That's round and pretty straight. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get the other one to put it on there and we'll get it turned and then I'll sand them at the same time so I'm not switching back and forth. That's a little trick I use when I want something flat. I get a card scraper, it's a flat edge. You just kind of put it up there at an angle and let it scrape and it'll be very clear where your, uh, where your low spots are. So little trick for you. I'm gonna sand these up to a thousand, do the Yorkshire grit and uh, buff them and we'll see what the difference is after that. So here's to a thousand grit plus Yorkshire grit, uh, abrasive paste. This is before anything. I'm gonna make this one. I'm gonna do the same thing with this one that I did this one. I'm gonna buff them. And next time you see me, we'll be on the buffing wheel. Ooh, it's pretty. I'm gonna get the other blanks I made and I'm gonna get them sanded and polished and I'm gonna save you that when you see me next time. It's gonna be time to show you the finished products. These hybrid blanks turned out really well. If you wanna see better pictures of them, uh, go to Instagram. I'll put a link below. Uh, these are really, really cool. Look at that pattern in there, it's pretty cool. All I did was these was uh, go to 220 with the random or orbital sander and then put them on the buffing wheels. The real thing I wanted to figure out was if you needed a pressure pot with this resin or not, and uh, I'll show you the results. Well, I have them both right here. If you remember, the big one was the one that went to the pressure pot, and the little one was the one that didn't go to the pressure pot, and I can't see anything. On the surface, you can see where it had a little bit of bubbles, but you're turning it down, and I can't see anything. Let me see if I can get you close-ups of these. I'll do the pressure pot first. These things turned out really well. And that's the pressure pot one. Let me switch. And here's the one with no pressure pot. And I can't find any bubbles in this thing, any defects or anything like that. Now, that being said, now a real test for this is gonna be with clear resin to see how clear it is and there's, if there's no bubbles in that without a pressure pot. And that will be coming up. I'm going to get two other popular brands of resin and I'm going to have a shootout with them. I'm going to do those two with a pressure pot, this one with a pressure pot and without. And I'm going to make pretty much the same thing out of each one of them and then compare and contrast. Have us a good old fashioned shootout with these things and it should be pretty fun. If you don't have a pressure pot and you get this resin, stir it real slowly and try not to introduce air into it and then you'll have less likelihood of getting bubbles in it. Um, I was stirring this kind of not as slow as I should because I knew most of it was going to the pressure pot anyway. And it was, a, it was a pretty good test just to do it how you normally would do it. But if you have this resin, um, 
stir it. You have plenty of time to stir it, so just stir it nicely, I guess you'd say, and then there's less likely to have bubbles, but this doesn't have any in it, and I'm pretty happy with that. The other thing that I would do that I learned on this the first time, when I got all the, the part A and part B and I put it into one container and I stirred it, and then I put it into the separate containers, I would leave it in that first container longer so that it would have a quicker chemical reaction. I was, I was kind of getting nervous there at the end, waiting for it to get up to temperature. If, if I would have had it in the original container longer to begin with, I think it would have happened faster and, and I wouldn't have, like there's a little bit of blending with these colors and uh, it probably would have been a better separate, uh, separated colors if I would have um, left it in the original container longer and not got nervous at the end. But as far as this resin goes, it obviously it shines up good. I really didn't spend that much time on these. These are, it was, it seemed like easier to polish than other resins and uh, it is pretty cool. So if you don't have a pressure pot, you don't have all this uh, fancy equipment and you want to get into resin casting, this is a good way to do it. I've got a band-aid on my finger. Um, this is a good way to do it. And if you go to the link below and get that resin, Jake 20 at checkout, you get 20% off. So it's even cheaper, there's less risk. Uh, and this stuff is fun. So if, uh, if it'll help you out and get you started in it, it's always cool when somebody says that I got, you got me started in this, it's, it's a pretty good thing. And uh, I'm happy that I could do it for you guys. Um, I think that's about it. For this one, we'll see y'all next time. Y'all be good.